Imainal Pacha. Welcome to Music Code, the show where we explore a topic in computer science, a topic in music, and combine them in creative ways. In this fourth episode, we will explore, in honor of International Jazz Day, live coding and jazz. Live coding. Remember in the second episode when we talked about compilers which convert a program written in a language such as C++ and convert it into a language that the machine can understand, i.e. ones and zeros? What's happening is that the compiler is taking your code saved in a file and writing a new file containing the machine language that the computer can understand and then run. So you can think of compilers as a sort of translator or interpreter for your code. Although other programming languages such as JavaScript and Python don't require a compiler, they still require a translator or an interpreter, which is able to convert the code you write in those languages into machine code that the computer can understand, just doing it on the fly. To make it explicit, let's look at the simple program we've been looking at in previous episodes that multiplies a number by two. Here's the program written in C++. On the right hand side, I'm running the compiler on this code to generate a new executable. When I run this executable, I have a program that multiplies any number I give it by two. The program looks very similar in Python, but we no longer have to compile it explicitly. We can just run the Python interpreter directly and have the same program that multiplies a number by two. Now let's say we wanted to change this program and have it multiply a number by three. If we change the code in C++ and then run the executable, you can see that it's still multiplying a number by two. The reason this is happening is because the computer is still running the program that we compiled with the previous version of the code. If we want the program to multiply a number by three, we have to recompile with our new code. After recompiling and then rerunning, we can see that our number is now being multiplied by three. In Python, it's a little different. After changing the code, we just have to restart the interpreter and our changes are reflected in the running program. In Python, it's faster. We don't have to recompile the code, we just rerun the interpreter and our changes are immediately reflected. Live coding takes this one step further, where the changes we make in the code are immediately reflected in the running program without having to recompile and without having to restart the interpreter. Ooh. Let's take a simple example. This Python code plays the beginning of Twinkle Twinkle on repeat on my piano. If I change the code while the program is running to play the beginning of Do Re Mi, it will still continue playing the beginning of Twinkle Twinkle until I stop the program and rerun the interpreter. This piece of code was written in Super Collider and it does the same thing as the Python program, just plays the beginning of Twinkle Twinkle on repeat on my piano. However, if I change the variable holding the melody to be the beginning of Do Re Mi, you can see that the changes will be reflected in the running program without having to restart the interpreter or recompile the code. This makes live coding dynamic and exciting, and it's typically used for artistic and or musical performance. In other words, the coding itself is part of the performance. Artists who use live coding typically will project their code onto a screen so that the audience can witness the code as it's being developed and affecting the performance. It's all part of the same experience. In other words, the artist is able to improvise with code as part of the performance. And this is a great segue into our next section. Jazz. I love jazz music, but it's an enormous topic and there's no way I can cover all of it in one episode. In fact, there's no universally accepted definition of jazz. It means different things to different people. There's different styles of jazz. There are songs that include parts that sound jazzy. There's jazz fusion, which combines jazz with different genres of music. For me, the core of the spirit of jazz is improvisation. Improvisation is the act of making music on the spot. As Frank Zappa would call it, spontaneous composition. Yes. But when we play jazz, we're not making everything up on the spot. We're typically following some type of form, structure, or a set of rules. Just like songs in classical and rock music have very specific structures or forms, songs in jazz also follow specific structures and forms. We just take a lot more freedom when we play them. In classical music, although we can inject our own personal interpretation, we're typically meant to play the notes exactly as the composer wrote them. Remember in the performance section of the first episode that I played that two-part invention by Bach? I was playing the notes exactly as Bach wrote them. 
In rock music, guitarists will often take solos that become an essential part of the song. So much so that these guitarists feel pressure to play the solos exactly as recorded on the album whenever they perform live. Mm -hmm. Those of us that play rock guitar still try to play these solos exactly as they were recorded on the album. In jazz music, musicians also take solos, but these musicians almost never play the same solo twice, even for really famous solos like Miles Davis's solo on So What. And for me, this is one of the things that makes jazz so exciting. Every time you hear a performance, it's different. And good performers are able to react to the audience in a way that makes it feel personalized. Some of the best live shows I've seen are not of my rock heroes playing in big arenas, but unknown artists playing in small jazz venues that are just on fire crafting their spontaneous compositions. To people that aren't familiar with jazz, it might seem like sometimes we're playing random notes, but we're really not. We are following a song structure and reacting to the musicians that we're playing with. To help clarify things a bit, I've asked two friends and amazing jazz musicians to help me out. Hi, my name is Jazz Robertson, and I play the drums. Hi, my name is Paul Thompson, and I play the bass. We're going to play my favorite things from The Sound of Music. Before we play the jazz version, we're going to play it straight. That is, no improvisation. In fact, what I'm playing on the piano is exactly what's written in the sheet music that I'll display on the video. Now we're going to play the same song, but as jazz. Notice that we're going to be taking a lot more freedom in how we perform the song. We'll start off by playing the melody once. Then I'm going to play a solo over the whole song structure. Notice that although Paul and Jazz are accompanying me, they're still improvising their parts. After my solo has gone through the whole song structure, Paul will take a solo and I'll be accompanying him. Once again, notice that I'm improvising my accompaniment. Once we've gone through the song structure for Paul's solo, it's time for Jazz's turn. In jazz, for drum solos, we typically do what's called trading fours. This means that the drummer will take a solo for four bars, then one of the other musicians, in this case me, will take a solo for another four bars, and we'll go back and forth in this way until we've gone through the whole song structure. Once we've done this, we'll play the melody once again and then finish the song. This may have been a lot to take in, so I've included the lead sheet so you can follow along as we play this tune. See you on the other side.
As I mentioned, jazz improvisation isn't just about taking solos. In fact, if we're just singing a melody, we can still be improvising. To showcase this, I've asked my good friend and ex-bandmate Marc Detroit to sing a song with me. Notice that although none of us is taking a solo in the traditional sense, we're both improvising. Once again, I've included the lead sheet to help you follow along. Before going into the final section, I'd like to take a moment to thank Paul Thompson, Jazz Robertson, and Marc Detroit for lending their talents to this episode. Paul has a really amazing YouTube channel where he talks about bass playing, jazz, and music in general that you should definitely check out and subscribe to. I've learned a lot from watching his videos. You should check out Jazz Robertson's website where you can find out what she's up to. The link is included in the video description. Marc recently released a really great jazz album that you should check out. The link is included in the video description below. Finally, if you like these videos, please subscribe, like, share with your friends and family. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or ideas for new episodes, leave them in the comments in this video or in any of the other videos. I love making these videos, but I really love hearing back from you and hearing what resonates with you, what you like, what you don't like, and what you'd like to see more of. Thanks. Okay, for the last section of this episode, I'm going to be improvising both musically and with code. I've written some base code in Super Collider that I can then control by writing new code on the spot, and I will use this to craft an improvisation from scratch. Unlike the previous performances that you heard in this episode, I'm not going to be following any structure other than the structure provided by the code I wrote. To make this as similar as possible to a real in-person experience, what you're about to hear was the first take I recorded with no edits. Enjoy.